Yo, peace was good. Welcome to another hip hop album review. This is part 163. The album that I will be reviewing tonight is DJ Quick's third album titled Safe and Sound, released in 1995. Uh, you guys by now should know who he is. If you guys don't know who he is, check out my first two albums that I did of his. Uh, Quick is the name, and check out the Way Too Funky album, alright? Um, right after Way Too Funky, um, he. You guys already know that he had an ongoing on beef with uh with MC8, but also he also caught some beef with uh, his former partner, uh, AMG, the one that he put on, uh, the one that had the uh, bitch better have my money. Um, I, from what I understand, I think it was because of um I think it had something to do with money or it was because um, Interscope Records like the things didn't work out with Interscope Records or whatever something like that. And I guess he blamed uh. You know, DJ Quick for that or some shit like that. I don't. I really don't know why. What was the story between them two? Um, if you guys know, let me know. Put down in the description box. Um, like I said before, um, right after Way Too Funky, you know, um, you know, I already told you that he did some stuff. Uh, he produced a whole album of uh, Pen, uh, the Penthouse Players Click album, Paid the Cost, which came out that same year. Uh, he did the whole album. He did the beats. Which I'm still trying to get my hands on. It's out of print, um, long out of print, hard to find. Go for some bread online too. But um, you know, I did some stuff, you know, for other people. Uh, he did some stuff for like Death Row, uh, people with Death Row and things like that. And then there was like a connection with him and Shook Knight because they known each other since like the late '80s, and um, they kind of reconnected around '93, '94, and that's what led to the to the um, you know, the you know, the for him doing work with Death Row and stuff like that, um, even to the point where he did some stuff for Tupac's uh, All Eyes On Me, which to the point I think he he mixed the whole album, or he did half of the album as far as like the mixing and stuff like that. But um, in 1993, he had made a song called um, Can't Fuck With A Nigga, which was actually featured on uh, the Menace to Society soundtrack, uh, it was a pretty dope joint right there. He in that song he was actually going at uh, Everlast of House of Pain. I don't know what went through with what what went on between them. I don't know if you guys know. Let me know uh, about that. Um, and then he did some stuff like uh, Candyman, who was like a West Coast MC. Did some stuff for like uh, Juvenile Committee, and then like the rest he did for like um, you know you know Death Row and stuff like that. And his group that he was like, you know, that the group that was affiliated with DJ Quick, uh, Second to None, uh, he did a whole album with them. It was called The Shit. That was supposed to come out in 1994 on Death Row Records. But that album was shelved. It never came out. I think maybe because of sample clearances or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure why it didn't come out. But uh, Death Row was very nefarious for that. It's very notorious for that. Um, you know, a lot of the 90s stuff is shelved, and even the stuff from the late 90s and 2000s are shelved and stuff like that, so, but a lot of those stuff you can find online, like in the Death Row forums and things like that, and I did hear the second and none album, the, the one I'm talking about, the second album, um, it's pretty good, I actually like it, I just wish they would like re-release it so that that would be dope, but you already know how that goes down, and then, supposedly, DJ Quick made an album before this. I guess it was supposed to be the original version of Safe and Sound, but he hated it so much he destroyed the masses. So I guess it wasn't that good. But um, and then he he started over, you know, started working on some more material, and the album ended up becoming this album right here, Safe and Sound. Um, it's funny because I remember seeing this album back in the day, back in like in the early 2000s, like uh, 2000, maybe 99, 2000, Circuit City. You guys remember Circuit City? Miss that place. Um, I remember seeing this shit all the time, and I've always liked the cover. I don't know, something about it looks dope. Um, I didn't know who he was, obviously. I didn't know who DJ Quick was, but um, until like years later. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to buy it at that time, but like I said, I didn't know who he was, so I didn't, I didn't even buy it. But then, um, yeah, man, and so this is pretty much the album. Uh, there's three singles off the album. The singles are well, it's really two official singles. The third one is kind of more of a like a like an unofficial single. Oh, and um, DJ Quick was also featured on the Murder uh, Murder Was a Case soundtrack with the song uh, Thousand Cents. I thought I thought I'd throw that out there, which is actually featured on this song. 
Um, the song Safe and Sound, um, Thousand Cents, and Summer Breeze. Those are the three singles, all right? Um, show you what the album looks like. See, it looks like pretty dope. Pristine condition. I bought it new, so I'm um, off eBay a couple of y'all. Uh, maybe like last year. Pretty dope. You see DJ Quick right here, all blooded out. His man's there, right there, doing in black. Pretty dope. All right, let's put this back. That's what the back looks like. All right. Dope cover right there. You see him in all black, just doing the signs. Um, little trivia with this one. Um, this picture was also used for the the 12 inch cover of uh, Safe and Sound, the, the first single. I just thought I thought I just threw that out there. All right. Open it up. See these Quick's hands are crossed. See the track listen, pretty dope. All right. Yeah, man, pretty pretty dope. Then you got like the shout outs and things like that with so many people. Pretty cool. Um, these are the features on the album. Um, yeah, man, very very dope, man. All right. So you know how I get down. I'll go through some of the tracks. Uh, production obviously is done by DJ Quick. So, you know how I get down, I'm going to go through some of the tracks, alright, uh, track one, uh, street level entrance, it's just an intro over a G-Funk beat, a nice, uh, bouncy G-Funk beat, um, you know, it, it, he's not rapping, but he is talking, it's just kind of like, you know, like, letting you guys know, like, yo, I haven't fall off, I'm still me, you know what I mean, but, um, he kind of, he throws shots at MCA and AMG, um, Cause you know he had beef with he had beef with MCA from back in the day, and so so around this time the beef was still brewing at that time. So, um, cause you know I did the review of the We Come Strap, so he threw some shots at DJ Quick, and um like two songs I believe. But yeah, um get at me um C level entrance like I said, it's just him talking over G from B doing shots at MG you know MCA. Um. If you guys know why he's going at Amy and G, um, I, I, I'm thinking maybe it's because of money or whatever. I'm not sure why, but if you guys really know the reason, let me know. Let me know why. You know what I mean? But that that's pretty much it. Uh, the street level entrance kind of sets the tone of the album, in my opinion. So, um, getting uh, then we're gonna go to track two. Get at me. That's a pretty dope track right there. Like I said, that's a song that he uh, is a diss track towards AMG. Um, it uses the same sample as uh, Brand Nubian's um, song, Brand Nubian, off the first album, uh, the One For All album. I did a review on that. If you haven't peeped that, check that out when you guys get a chance. Um, there was a line where he said, I wrote it down where um, he says, Mr. You Know Who, Remember Me? I met you when you when I was PPC, Penthouse uh, Players Click, with um, Player Ham and um, I forgot the other dude's name. And you wasn't nothing but a scrub. It's wearing plaid pants and bubble gums and begging for grub. And then when you were hips, you're starting growing. I'm like, damn, son. I'm like, he's just, damn quick. He's just going in, yo. <laughs> yeah, man. And pretty much, it's a pretty dope song. I, I like that joint right there. I um, like the beat, too. It's pretty dope. Uh, track three, Digging On You. Di no, Digging You Out. That's a sex track. Pretty dope. Kind of very, it's very explicit, man. Very, very explicit. Um, if you guys know DJ Quick, you know he's all about girls, man. Um, like, the thing with DJ Quick, man, he's one of those cats that, you know, like, he's... He's like a well-rounded dude, like, where, like, he could be gangster, but at the same time, he could be a cool dude, and he could be a ladies' man. He's like a well-rounded dude. Everybody that... Every man would want to be, you know what I'm saying? So, that's that's what I get from him. But, yeah, uh, Digging You Out, like I said, is a sex track. Uh, there's a line where he wrote, where he says, um, it's like... It's like, ah, uh, how you like me now, Mr. Quick up in your ass like a dug of puppy chow. Cause I'm diggy, I'm diggy digging the guts out. Then I'm taking my nuts out, writing them, rinsing off them, I'm mopping out. I mean, damn, dude, like, <laughs> oh man, that's funny, man. But yeah, um, if you were a girl, I mean, if you're on a date, you know, that's the song that I wouldn't play. You know what I mean? That's just my opinion. But, um, yeah, man, very dope joint right there. Uh, track four, uh, Safe and Sound, that was the first single. There's a video for that joint right there. Uh, like I said, the first single is a nice funky track, very relaxed and very laid back. Uh, it's pretty much a, it's an autobiographical track 
where um you know he talks about how he came about like he talks about um when he was 14 years old uh how he joined the blood he became a blood and then he talks about um i think when he was like 16 or 17 is when he uh became homeless i think his mom kicked him out or whatever because of the gang shit he's doing and yeah like i say he ended up getting uh kicked out he became homeless and then um uh the two guys play him, and like I said, I forgot the other dude's name. Um, of uh, Penthouse Players Click, you know, kind of took him under his wing, and then you know, kind of like molded him to be the man that he is today. And then that's when he, that's how he got his whole image, like that whole pimp shit with the with the Jerry curls and the permed hair and the pimp pimped out shit. You know, he got that from them. So you know, and that's what I got from that joint right there. Um, pretty dope song right there, and the video is nice too. Pretty cool. Uh, track five, and, and the thing is, the song, it it doesn't sound dated. You know what I mean? Like where, like if you listen to the first two albums, they sound dated, which I have no problem with. But like when you hear a song like Safe and Sound, it doesn't sound like from 1995. It has like a, it sounds like if he made that song today, like it would sound fresh. Like that's how dope that song is, and that's what I got from that joint right there. Uh, track five, um, something for the mood. Um. He just talking about these hood rats, man. There's you playing games and stuff like that. Um, that's what I got from the joint. Something for the mood. That's a pretty dope track. Uh, track six. Um, don't you eat it? Don't you? Uh, don't you eat it? Uh, it's pretty much about you know this cat. You know he's with his girl. You know he about to go down on the girl. You know about to eat her out and things like that. But what he doesn't realize is like when he gets down to her, like, I guess you realize, like, he got burned, or, like, he just realized how bad it smelled and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, man. Funny, 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 funny. Um, track s- <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, track seven, Can I Eat It? Uh, it's pretty much sort of about the dangers of eating pussy, pretty much. Um, yeah, he goes into real detail with that shit. Like I said, um, for all my feminine, if you're a feminist, I, I wouldn't recommend checking this album out. I just, I wouldn't recommend this album. That's just my opinion. Um, if you, especially if you're sensitive, you know what I mean. But you know, it is what it is. Um, track eight is another sex track. It's your fantasy. Um, yeah, it's just self-explanatory. Uh, track nine, the whole in you. That's a that's a posse cut. Uh, it features high C, uh, second to none. Uh, Sexy Leroy and the Chucky Lovelets. Um, actually, um, if you guys are familiar with uh, Way Too Funky, they were actually featured on the song um, "Let Me Rip You Tonight" on the Way Too Funky album. I think that's the one where I think he was rapping like with a fake ass patois song. I mean patois accent, yo. Like the the horrible the. Oh my god! Like when he did that shit, turned me off. I don't know why he did that shit, but I think that's the one. And um, that was the one like when like um, I think Sexy Leroy was like you know talking with the deep ass voice, the R and B radio host with the black radio host. Like hey baby, it's the love doctor. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying like that corny ass shit. Let me change the songs. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, um, yeah, so it's like Sexy Leroy with the deep deep ass voice that you hear in like the black, you know, R&B uh, radio stations and shit like that. Um, yeah, that's that's a posse cut, you know, just so it's another sex track. Um, yeah, that was cool. I liked it, you know what I mean? But it wasn't bad. It was actually a cool track. I had no problem with this, with that song. Um, track 10, Thousand Cents. It's a song dedicated to MC8. Man, woo! I love you, MC8, but he killed MC8 in this song. He killed his whole career. MC8 has not been the same since. I know some of you guys, most of you guys might agree with me. Some of you guys might not, but I'm sorry, but he did. He just never came. This, he just never became the same. That's just my opinion. Um, there, with, especially with the line where he says, um, "Tell me why you act so scary." Giving, um, giving your set a bad name with a mis, mis, with a misspelled name, A I A I H T. Now, you, now should I continue? Yeah, you left the G out because the G ain't in you.
Woo! Yo, like, how could you come back to that? Like, that's crazy. This is 1995. Fellas, if you're going to do a diss track, study a song like that. I mean, come on, man. And then he, he calls him out of, out of his government name, Aaron Tyler. I'm like, come on, man. Like, you... Yo, that shit is <laughs> Oh man. That's funny. Yo, that that that's crazy. Um yeah, Dials and Cents. Again, that's a song that was actually featured on the Murder Murder Was the Case soundtrack, so uh definitely check that out. But yeah, he killed MCA on that song, man. Woo! Killed his whole career. And like I said, MCA hasn't been the same since. Uh track eleven, let you have it. Uh, it's another diss track to MC eight. Um yeah, yo, MC, yo, Quick was mad angry on this album, man. He, he gave no, yo, no fucks given, man. He had a line where he said, um, coming up with the quickness, now you know whose dick this is, down in the doors of the compton's most bitches. Damn, like, <laughs> wow, yeah, he, he, he let them have it, man. I, I thought that was pretty funny, man. Um, moving on to track 12, um, Summer Breeze. Uh, that's the single. That's the next single. Um, even though, like I said, Thousand Cents was like the unofficial single, but uh, Summer Breeze was like the second single of the album. But um, it's pretty much like a continuation of the first single, um, Safe and Sound, where like the second, the, the first single, it, it started off when he was. It, um. Let me just... <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yeah, so um, like I said before, uh, it leads off with um, it, it picks up where you know Safe and Sound left off when he was 17. Now he's talking about when he turns 17 and when he um when he turns 18, and he becomes a young adult. I think it, it chronicles from when he was 17 all the way up to 20 when he was 23 years old because uh, he wrote it because he dropped this album when he was 25 years old. So. I'm assuming he wrote the album when he was 23 years old and back in 1993. But you know, it just chronicles him from 19, uh, from 17 to 93. So it just talks about him, like you know, him, um, you know, growing, like you know, kind of like living at uh, Clay Ham's house, and then, and then that's when he started like to kind of find himself as an artist. You know, uh, he he, um, that's when he got like the the, the Jerry curls that you know that you guys know of him from the first album. Um, well, at least for the first two albums, I should say, he started getting his like, his like his trademark image, if, if you will. Uh, started getting more confidence, like he found his sound and things like that. And he told us a little bit about that, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So, like I said, it's, it, it's almost like a like it's like I said, it's a continuation of Safe and Sound. Excuse me, um, but yeah, that was a pretty dope track. That could, like I said, I, I don't know, I don't think there's a video for that, but that definitely was a single, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and what, and it, you guys know, if you guys follow DJ Quick, um, there will, it wouldn't be a DJ Quick album without a Quick Screw. So this is a Quick Screw part three. You guys know Quick Screw is just an instrumental, um, very dope song right there, very nice beat. I could see Tupac on that joint for some reason. You know what I mean? Like Tupac would sound nice over that beat. If you listen to it, you guys know what I'm talking about. But he would sound nice over that. Um, that's Quick Screw Three, uh, Track Fourteen, uh, Sucker Free. It features a uh, player ham of Penthouse Players Click. Um, DJ Quick is not on the song. It's just uh, it's a player ham soul track. Uh, he actually does his thing right there. Pretty dope. Uh, track Fifteen, Keep the P in it. Um, it's a posse cut. It features um, second to none, uh, two tone, high C, a uh, Cam who's um, Ice Cube's cousin, and um, play him. And pretty dope joint, man. I mean, I have no complaints about this shit. Man. Pretty dope. Uh, track 16, hurrah, hurrah for the funk reprise. It's just an outro and it's an instrumental. Pretty dope. And um, it's not credited on here, but after the after the um, the outro is a, is a bonus track called Tank Array. Um, pretty dope joint right there. That could have been a single too. Definitely could have been a single. Um, to me, that I've always felt like that was the, the the sequel to Tonight. The song Tonight, his second single off the 
off the um, off the Quick Is the Name album, and like I said, very dope. It has that that is the type of joint like you know if you have if you have like a house party, you could play that in a club. It just has that vibe to it. Very dope, especially if you're drinking your Hennessy or your Tanqueray or any type of liquor. Then Tanqueray, that's definitely a song to play, man. Um, I highly recommend that shit right there to check out, especially if like you're having a party or you're about to go out to the club. You play that with your boys and. You know, you just have a good time, man. Overall, great album. This is a classic album. I don't say this, I don't say classic a lot, but this is definitely a classic album. Definitely one of DJ Quick's best albums. Um, pretty much his first three albums are my favorite. Um, I haven't heard, I mean, I've heard bits and pieces of his other albums, but I can't give you my... Like I was saying before, sorry about that. Um, like I said, I haven't heard, I haven't heard like the rest of his, his discography. Like I've heard bits and pieces of Rhythmalism, which I heard it was a good album. Um, I haven't heard Bounds and Options. I haven't heard um, Book of David. Um, um, the other albums, I will have to check them out, but um, I don't have them, so. Uh, so I know some of you guys are gonna ask me review to do a review on them, but I just don't have those albums. But I'll try to get my get my hands on it. Um, DJ Quick, like his albums are hard to come by. At least where I stay at, like you know they're not easy to find. Um, if they do have it, they'll have like his newer albums. Like they'll have like um, you know the best of DJ Quick, which I, I don't really see to have the point. Need to have the point. I don't see the point of having that. You know what I mean? Because especially with pretty much all the songs from like his. The best songs of the album is some like his singles and things like that. But um, what I like about this album is the fact that um, the production, the production is so dope, and you know things like that. Yeah, there was a little bit too much sex tracks, but I can deal with it, you know, because that's part of DJ Quick's persona. Cause it's a nice balanced album in my opinion. Um, in my opinion, this is the album that he found. He found his sound with this album because I feel like with the first two albums. He was looking for his sound. He didn't have his sound quite yet. You know what I mean? It wasn't until maybe like the second album is where he found his sound a little bit. But he was still. It wasn't like the trademark DJ Quick. This album, in my opinion, he found his sound. Is you get the, the the trademark DJ Quick, and I feel like he still has that safe and sound um, feel of his beats today, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, man, DJ Quick, man. I mean, he's so underrated, man. And like, he's so he's underrated as an MC and a producer. And I know some people might say, like, you know, um, you know, people like to compare Dr. Dre and DJ Quick. <sighs> I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna ask me, like, who, who do I like better? I don't know, man, because it's kind of tough. Because I like I like Dr. Dre from the '90s, you know what I mean. But I also like DJ Quick. But I think, like, right now, if you ask me today, I would, like, the who's doing shit now, I would have to say DJ Quick, man. You know, his shit is, like, a lot more funky, very more original. Um, because DJ, because Dr. Dre at one point, like, at, in the 2000s, he was kind of, like, hit or miss. And then his stuff started, like, started sounding too repetitive. But, um, and it's a shame that people don't really mention this album, you know, like, when it comes to, like, the best... Uh, gangster rap albums or like you know G Funk or West Coast classic albums and stuff. They rarely mention this album, but um, I know a lot of people think this is his best album. I could I could understand why. I would say the same, but my his first three albums are my favorite so far, man. Um, like I said, I have no complaints about this album. Very dope. Um, just like how aggressive he was with the diss tracks. You know what I mean? I would highly recommend this album. Um, if you guys don't know who DJ Quick is and you guys want to know what's his sound, how he sounds like, and what's the album to go to, I will start with this album. This is the album I would start with. I know it's kind of later in his career, like in the middle of his career, but like I said, I feel like he found his sound with this album, and um, I highly recommend it. Um, it's not an album that's easy to find, but like you're not going to go to the store and find it unless like you know, you're like in a big city like you know like maybe like New York or Chicago or something like that but um yeah man but it's cheap I got it for like four bucks on eBay so but that's it folks um hope you guys enjoyed that review uh, stay tuned for more peace